Hello and welcome. Olafur and I are here again because this story doesn't really finish. And it's like, and we were exploring this today, we are both in a metamorphosis that seems to be very synchronistically aligned. And so Olafur, you came back to me after the last one and said, we need to talk about harmonic resonance. And of course we have been touching it. And I would like you to share with us about something that we also share, which is writing and how harmonic resonance came to you through language in your book that hopefully right. published next year. Yeah, so uh, thanks for mentioning that. Um, um, it's fascinating to me. It was like, because you know, uh, what what we're trying to do with words and, and in writing is often like we're trying to articulate something that is maybe difficult to articulate uh, in terms of like a structural manner, but you, but there can, there are ways to articulate and express things through metaphors and, and through symbolic language. And this is where I love like poetry and I've been writing poetry for since for for half of my life, basically. And uh, I and and it's always been about this trying to articulate something intuitive, something that like that I feel on an energy level uh, as a as a high, highly sensitive person. You're always trying to understand the world around you. So writing is something that I've always. You know, it's always been like a big part of me. So I started writing this book, writing this book uh, many years ago. It's basically complete. I'm gonna, I'm gonna publish it next year. That's a promise to myself, even though nobody, <laughs> nobody reads it, but I'm sure somebody will. But, but it doesn't matter. I'm just doing it for myself. But the, but it is a lot of those poems in there are about like some kind of processes, you know, that we go through relationships we have with ourselves with ourselves and others and the world around us and consciousness itself this kind of interesting intersection between being a human and being a consciousness at the same time and and that allows this kind of i don't know what to call it just like uh, uh, a basis for language to emerge in a very fascinating, dynamic way where words can be conduits for a, uh, a deeper intuitive expression of, of life, I think, to us. And yes, I think that is, to some extent, what harmonic resonance is. Or, or at least a doorway into it. And I also find that like those poems or those articulations that I manage to, to kind of anchor, they can be, they sort of crystallize the meaning in a way that I can always come back to the meaning and feel it. And I don't know, I don't know if anybody else would, but I do. No, that is that's the fascinating part of, <laughs> of writing and poetry. What about you? What about yourself? Yeah, I, again, it is fascinating to me that you and I share so much more than we could possibly imagine. I've been writing from about 12, my first short story I wrote when I was 12. I wasn't much into school writing. I was more in using language again like you I was fascinated by language to express what came from my heart I was never interested in why things are like this or not I was really interested in how language like you can be that conduit of that connection between and I was aware of this with 12 of that connection between this human experience that, that was very clear and conscious to me and yet knowing that this is not all that I am. 
I didn't have all the training. I didn't know what I knew, but I knew I was not just that human experience. And so writing for me together with music was my way of expression. Right. And same like you, I really feel, and this is also interesting, another lady we're doing dancing dialogue with is, is uh, Georgia. And of course she helps authors, she coaches them to actually finish a book. So it, it is very interesting how synchronicity works. And yeah, writing for me, and I also write poetry, as you are aware, maybe. Writing for me is that spontaneous expression of the heart that goes beyond the meaning. And of course, I love metaphors and metonymies. And when I got to lecture language and culture and, and semiotics, it was like, ah, this is amazing. I love this. And... The final thing on the last note, we are in the same position again, not an accident because we didn't know that my first book is currently being edited by a dear friend in New Zealand who understands my funny language and way of expression because this is important to, to really break or keep the magic of the writing. I feel some, <laughs> some of the things that you and I write, you can't edit that much. And those words who need to go to the heart of others they will go because the energy is there right so yeah we're in the same position very um secretly been writing for a long long time and ready to let it go yeah and uh, and it's also like uh, for me i think it's also like things things like that could have life of their own in terms of do it does it have more, more about the timing of its expression and what i'm finding like this kind of poetry this kind of process based language uh, consciousness expressed through metaphor through nature uh, is what i'm working with a lot um, that kind of language probably has never had more a better timing to come out than now, you know. And so, and I almost got it published in 2020. Uh, 2020. Uh, it was this close. Mm -hmm. so it was like I had read the script was ready and 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 uh, and it was well received. And and uh, then COVID happened and everything got like uh, quite messy. Uh, since then, I have actually improved it a lot, you know, so it's even better, and the timing is probably even better. So I'm actually grateful that I that it didn't come out. So, but it, but the the what I am, I must say, uh, because I feel like there's probably nothing of all the projects that I have done here to four. Mm -hmm. is that I, I never poured as much of myself into anything even though i put a lot of myself in all my projects they're all reflection of my deepest and my core values in certain ways but in terms of my whole self my personal body my emotional body everything that has to do with who i am as a and uh, as an authentic self uh, I've not put so much of me into anything else that I have done. So that is something that like another like that that another factor to it. It's like, am I ready to put so much of myself out there for others to just like uh, read, you know? Uh, and I think like it's coming. I think yes, I am okay with it. I am because I'm like I am finally like I could say that I am that okay with myself, that content with myself that I, I'm I'm fine, you know, I'm fine with it. I'm just letting it out there and allow people to see it and interpret it in their uh, interpret it in their own way, receive it in their own way, and just trust that whatever is in there will find 
its own point of resonance to whom that needs it at whatever time. But it's just like you're putting it out there and just allowing the, the universe to do the rest. Yeah. I think yeah. I'm, I could have I have I could have said that, but I think energetically, I think I'm finally ready for it, you know. It is very beautiful and interesting how you're saying that because it's like you are talking as me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I I so resonate with everything that you say. What comes through the energy of words and also voice, because I also did some audio, uh, not audio books, but, but in that direction, I recorded stories. Right. Some classes that go with it, and I tell you more about this. But it takes a time until you are so one with your oneness, with your wholeness, that you actually okay to share that. Right. And I feel this is also a sign that you have done the inner work. You have allowed yourself to be that wholeness. You have embraced your journey as a soul, maybe through different lives, through different star systems, whatever resonates with you. You have come into that oneness of being here right now in this physical body, but also in, of course, the great I am, the infinity, the boundlessness that, that bring us all together. And I feel we are both at the same point where we are ready to let that go. When you're talking, you know, I just on Saturday, a friend of ours, she was listening to one of these stories. I, I recorded an audio story about Metti the Sloth and right. having a conversation and more than a conversation, obviously, with her brother. And I took the part of the brother trying to help first Metti because she kept on falling down. She couldn't hold herself. It was too boring. It was nothing inspiring. And how they worked through just the drama of not rescuing and how the mother supported that process. And so this friend has been listening to it ever since she had it. And she said, we need to put it in a book. We make a pretty book. She has some background in that. And then I was listening again and I'm like, I can't recreate that magic of that moment. And now this is also interesting because these stories i call them light spirit quests they were recorded during we were locked down in lima the first part of covid stuff and so they also have an amazing context so when these stories were created or received or downloaded we were in lockdown in lima for five months and we couldn't come back home So that state, but still of contentment, of trust, of resonance, of, of being here. And I don't like Lima. It was very hard. But the blessings that came from that were just incredible. So when I tried now, because my friend said, we need to publish a book, make it really nice and all of that. I wanted to write it. So I listened to the story again, but I felt like I can't recreate that magic. Words flow in a certain way and speaking and writing is not always the same. I agree. I agree with that. However, yesterday I spoke it and I, you know, with this voice um, application that you can record and it writes. So, but I had to do it again because I don't feel that this audio of the story should be changed. No. So this is all that resonance, that also accepting that things are how they are at this particular time. Absolutely. And you touched upon like what you said so beautifully earlier, um, this journey into wholeness journey into a 
acceptance, journey into fearlessness, journey into love, journey into whatever it is that we prefer. And that for us as human beings, to me, is a journey, a process, and that is very much, very much attuned to what you said in the beginning of this conversation where you mentioned, mentioned metamorphosis. And we've also said in our conversation that the DNA of wholeness is already within us. And sometimes, and we also talked about before in our conversations, that crisis and difficulties and human conditioning is a part of the process. This is what makes the metamorphosis, what makes the transformation, what makes the transition. And it's like, even though I feel today, what like, where I'm, I feel like I'm in a good space, I'm aligned with myself and aligned with the wholeness. Like you said so beautifully about like, you know, our connection to wholeness and, um, and, and those kind of things that the wholeness consists of, mm -hmm. things that like we aspire to and prefer, like, uh, you know, love, uh, connection, and everything that we, we value and, and, and are moving towards. Sometimes like the journey there, journey towards it, it has to be through some kind of challenges and difficulty. And, and, and like, and sometimes like my, what my experience has been since 2020, it is move, being moved slightly out of the comfort zone. And sometimes even felt like I've been pushed out of the comfort zone and uh, with some resistance, you know, to my, my, my needs and whatever it is that is holding back to that comfort, resisting the process. And that can be, can, can generate a little bit of friction and pain and stuff like that but it's the journey that we are in the journey towards wholeness that really matters and and it's like trusting that the dna of wholeness and D, the dna of our own unique identity identity and our core is there yes and 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 once we have like we've got through that threshold where we can just like trust the wholeness that we are a part of and trust ourselves as a part of the wholeness, something fundamentally shifts. And that becomes, I think, like, I think, I think we're in there now, we're getting there. That's the, that's what it, the metamorphosis has been bringing us, even though we've been, we've been preparing this for our, most of our lives, most probably. But the timing is associated most probably with all the changes that are going on in the planet. And the planet itself seems to be going to metamorphosis. Our society yes. seems to be going to metamorphosis. But that has to manifest in, it, in us as individuals. Exactly. And that brings us also back to the writing, right? Yes. Because writing is like describing this beautiful process we are going through. And it's a beautiful process that sometimes there is pain and friction and challenge, but there's so much beauty and lightness underneath it. Some, it's like it is the process of what, you know, like the, what, the butterfly, if you will. You know, it's a, such a nice metaphor. And you mentioned dragonflies and, and, and talk, talk about dragonflies, but life, it's just a reflection of what kind of poetic symbols life has for us to reflect back to us the journey and the process that we are in as human beings in relation to our wholeness. So it's like, there's so much in there. It's just so rich of life chains and processes that like you can probably talk about it forever and write loads of poems about it. But still, you know, it kind of 
it's right there. You know, it's yes, part of our right. experiential yeah. matrix. Yeah, and this is at the essence, and you say it really so amazingly clear in that in that space of metamorphosis, in the way life has given us the gift of metamorphosis. Okay, we're talking today specifically about the butterfly and the dragonfly, but isn't it fascinating that at the same time you and I and everybody else has chosen to be here, the universe goes also through a metamorphosis. We are in the middle of a shift from what they call the Piscean Age into the Aquarian Age. We are talking about well-established scientists, even 10 and 20 years ago, who talk about that star seeds, the souls from the stars, they have come here at this time to be part of that shift. The indigenous people, whether the Maya or the Hopi or the Aboriginals or whoever, they talk about this big empty time between 2012 and 2032 for humanity to go through that final part of metamorphosis. This DNA that on some level maybe has been hidden to us, but is now actually coming out. Right. And for me, that is fascinating. We are not, we are unique in the way we are. But at the same time, it's connected to what's happening on the earth. Earth is regenerating anyway. Earth has gone through all kinds of things, ice ages and whatever. And now we have the privilege to metamorph with earth. So for me, how that all comes together and for us to see how everything is connected. Mm -hmm. But right. I want to say one more thing that was very important to me as well. And I really, really appreciate that. It's not like you and me are flying on clouds, always happy, always content, always in that one. There's <laughs> no life and the inner work that yes, causes the access heart doesn't always present itself the way we think. I get stuck too. And so do you. I get lost. Course. I can get myself into drama. I can. <laughs> I recognize yeah, yeah. it maybe very fast, but it doesn't mean that we are not exposed to everything that is out there. And as we're saying in this metamorphosis, there is a lot to let go. And a lot of things are breaking yes. because as you said, whatever that word is, when the butterfly or the dragonfly, I know the dragonfly better, they're hanging on a tree in this ugly little nymph that lived for four years in the water, climbing up a tree and hanging there, totally exposed to predators or whatever, and then letting go. So it's more than letting go the skin in the example that we had last time also with the, with the serpent, with the snake. No, you're letting go everything that you thought you were. And you become something that could never fly for mm -hmm. both the butterfly and, and the dragonfly. So. For me, this is interesting, but it doesn't happen in isolation. We are all in that same space. Yes, absolutely. And it's a nature, an understanding that is like, it's a nature to that, that we are a part of. It's a process that we most probably, we chose to come here and experience that. Mm -hmm. It's not just something that happens randomly. It is a part of design. The, the, the design of life, sign of nature, sign of the universe that is happening on a micro and macro level. And uh, it's a fascinating thing. And this is what it seems to be what we are slowly and progressively as species awakening to and understanding ourselves in this bigger context. And yes, of course, there are endless things to 
to be revealed to us. It's, a, it's an endless journey. And um, also, like you said, it's not like you don't, don't go through stuff, like human stuff. Everybody, we're human beings. And of course, we go through human stuff. And there's always potential for drama or potential for whatever. But I think like as we become who we truly are and integrate ourselves to the wholeness, to the in, inner whole and the whole that can then be expressed outwardly in our relationships with others and life, that, that um, it becomes a different baseline so that we don't get stuck anymore in the things that we used to get stuck in may, when we were maybe before, earlier in the process. But that's also part of the process when you look back and and and, and I was like, so that that is that kind of it seems to me that we just as we move towards the truth, move our own truth, the wholeness, um, and our own relationship to the wholeness that uh, it becomes such a paradoxical <laughs> expression. Yes. And uh, and we talk about harmonic resonance and these kind of things, and and a lot of it seems to be merged, moving through a point of paradox. You know, there is no longer, there is no longer. Uh, one or the other there is just one and the other and that's everything is just moving into in this kind of flow of interaction and and uh, reflection and contrast and what I what have you you know in, to, to orchestrate an experience in which we ex in which we get a deeper connection with ourselves and then others as well as a reflection was probably of ourselves it's just an endless kind of um, process that most probably um, like ancient civilization civilizations knew quite well and effortlessly and yeah. we are just sort of now remembering again as we're moving through this new metamorphosis yeah. but in a, in a new version of Exactly. Yeah, your words have just expressed the most paradoxical situation in a way that I feel, hopefully, and I feel that becomes accessible because we both have the courage to bring out the words that describe that. And as you said, and this is really something I am so much into, my word is more and than but and against and for. As what is emerging here and what is coming, and this is the emerging archetypes, I start writing more about that, of course. But what we are talking about is exactly that. We are no longer attached if this is right or wrong. We are no longer attached to if this is good or bad in that harmonic resonance even the dissonance has a purpose to bring us back into the harmonics of that resonance and so it is no longer the analysis of the mind it is the resonance obviously in the heart mm -hmm. and it is and it is not one opinion or the other it is one unique against each other is one uniqueness and another it's one wholeness mm -hmm. and another there is no more separation everybody has a unique expression absolutely and yet in this harmonic resonance there is the magic of the commonality that we also refer to all the time. We have more in common than we have apart. Right. Right. And that doesn't mean that we are the same. It just means 
there is a togetherness that occurs. And this is, of course, the idea of the dialogue. We don't need to convince each other. We don't need to figure out who is right or wrong. We are here to make space for the magic as it is unfolding. Just like that. And it, and it does unfold. You know, I feel that's exactly what happens. You know, create this. Um, and, I, and, I, and I also noticed this in, in, in uh, coaching. Uh, coaching spaces like. It always feels to me when you when there are two people having a dialogue in a way that they're open-minded to each other and they recognize that there is a part, there's a wholeness involved. I feel that that is like, even though you we talk, let's go back a little, little bit to the principle of three. And that is like, there is a third dimension, third entity or, or third sort of stream that that neither of us would connect to if we were just alone. Mm -hmm. It takes two of us to come together to allow that stream to occur. And through that is all sorts of, even though we're, in a, we're in a, uh, you know, on the opposite side of the planet, you know, we are, and there's, it's like, but it doesn't matter. The no. space is still mm -hmm. there. The magic is still there. The resonance is still, there and you can, and it's palpable it's literally you can feel it now this is the download coming through it there's a movement there's energy there's information there is synthesis and that's it it's a, and it's, it's amazing yeah you're like mind blown every time it happens you know? yeah every session this is the magic hmm. And it doesn't need an explanation and we are all in it. Yes, that's the thing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it doesn't mean that we connect with every person being the way you and I connect. It doesn't mean that. No, no. But it shows that across the planet, there are people who have that connection, who are coming together now. Because we have so all the time and it, it's all the time. And I think like it is simply that like, you know, the beauty if like if there's any if there's any message to really bring across to people in this manner, you know, I, I hope that, you know, that's the part of the kind of I, the future that I envision or hope to see more of is that these kind of dialogues, these kind of interactions in any place, anywhere, will take more place because through that we, we are anchoring more consciousness. Consciousness is flowing through us, facilitating, we're facilitating each other by approaching each other in this way. As, as a, we're seeing, I see you as a part of the whole, you see me as a part of the whole, Therefore, the whole is present. Exactly. And it does take that connection. It is beautiful to have that wholeness on your own and maybe with your partner or with the other people in your life. But we are at a point where this connection to another wholeness is taking into a new dimension. Right. Now, I have been very blessed to live in different parts of the world, in different cultures and all of that. And I have on many levels experienced that in a physical sense as well. Where you go, what's the likelihood that you connect to somebody in Indonesia or wherever I was living on that level? Right. And now you and I have the same thing online in a virtual space yeah. <laughs> not an accident it is not an accident and i feel it is a time to come together it also is the journey of growing more together so if we haven't done any inner work if we are just starting to wake up actually all of that doesn't matter matter because 
we can all catch up it's all a similar journey and the more we have these connections with each other where already a lot of commonalities exist that opens up the opportunity for all others and that for me is harmonic resonance and also the courage if i feel resistance well then i feel it but i don't stay there right absolutely and 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 yeah and uh and i was like uh and at this point like you've said it yourself dissonance and those things are actually like it, it is actually just a part of the whole communication experience of life and and it is a part of it's like even the dissonance is an expression of the resonance exactly you know even though it's not necessarily brought into its harmonic uh, spectrum of high in higher harmonic of what resonance can be it's still an indicator of something that is useful for us to know and reflect on in the process so if we are like resisting things that are maybe less enjoyable and uncomfortable and like you talked about the inner work then we're actually denying ourselves of the outcome that we often desire because those part those aspects that we tend to deem or judge as something negative or try to push away from us are a part of us and they are essential to reach to that cent you know centralized place of wholeness within ourselves and i think that is very essential you know to to be to be aware of and and it was like and even though it was like now in my personal life it's like i don't experience like pain a lot anymore i don't really it's like not that i don't experience deep psychological pain mm -hmm. it just hap it happens very rarely but if it happens then i would welcome it and i would see it it's a, a there's something is going on something good is happening it is a gift but i won't seek it out either no but if it comes to me i won't see it as like that i you know see it as a bad thing anymore yes or i would judge myself as a bad person because i'm feeling it i won't do that anymore yes i have done that but i don't do that anymore because i have learned I used to take my pain and add more pain to it and become so intense that like that I just couldn't escape from it and I had to move through it and that became sort of the journey of transmutation and alchemy that now I understand the purpose of pain is love. You know? Yeah, and, and that, I that really kind of thing. love that you say that and I resonate mm. with that because this is life and I I can't just say it's very similar for me. It takes courage to allow the dissonance, to feel the pain, and to then step back and observe it and allow it to happen and to flow through. Because if we don't resist it, it doesn't last that long. Then you don't add the pain. Then you just allow it to be what it is in music. I wasn't an accomplished clarinet player or a jazz player or whatever, but in jazz, there is notes that you need the courage to put in and they create a little dissonance. Right, right. That note that makes the difference. And of course, it's intuitive. It's improvisation, as they call it. Mm -hmm. And of course, now all my music is improvised and intuitive and the dissonance for me is as important as the harmony. Beautiful. Uh, the, the, and, and, and would we be able to appreciate the harmonic if we wouldn't be able to recognize the dissonance? 
would we be able to appreciate the light if we wouldn't have experienced some of the shadows and the darkness? Mm -hmm. Would be able to appreciate the, the love and the lightness if you wouldn't have experienced some of its opposites, you know? Yeah. And I was like, and that's probably, and, and but the beauty was like, I, it was like, those kind of things is like, that we are often at war with are not necessarily at something to be at war with or there are maybe something to learn to understand learn to accept and i'm not saying that people shouldn't have been having healthy boundaries either no. like we talked about before but it's just kind of to to allow ourselves to see that everything plays a part can play a part and Everything, everything we can experience in a, in a relative, we experience in a relative way. And there's a relevance for everything that we personally experience. Yes. There's relevance for, for us. Um, but the thing about like talking about negativity and like I would be so bold by saying that actually negativity in and of itself does not exist, even though the experience does exist. Thank you. Thank you. And everything is happening within a positive or more or like a wholesome context. We are putting that label that this is negative. And yes. for me, that is also the Maya, as we call it in the yogic right. illusion. And I totally, totally agree with you negative actually does not exist this is an experience that we can have but it's part of the maya it's part of the illusion and so when we can see beyond and through the maya and the illusion then we can come into this harmonic resonance now we have gone very long today and i feel it's okay those people who <laughs> here with us and enjoy with us that is all good i have a very special request and i hope you don't uh, reject my request would it be possible for you to read us just a short part of a poem that you have in icelandic i would love to have the experience of feeling your language Right. from your writing just something short well most of my poems are short uh, yeah. at least not more than one page okay <laughs> <laughs> let's find something i have it my right in my computer let me put on my glasses so yes, i can please. read properly <clears throat> yeah here's one short okay are you ready I'm ready. I want to hear it. Það kennir einkennilegs samhljóns. Hvert sinn sem við verðum vör við vitundar undrið sjálft. Undur þess að vera var við að vera til. That's it. Wow. What I feel is resonance. And it I felt it in all my body. I feel it 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 goes with the metamorphosis, it goes with the harmonic resonance. Just just the energy of your language and your poem. And it also has for me a spark of hope. Right. Could you give us a very brief summary to finalize today? What that means? So basically, and uh, so what it means is like you will, ex what it means is like you will experience a strange uh, resonance or a harmonic resonance, basically. It's a, it's, a, it's a word that we use in terms of in Iceland, I guess, like, uh, um, uh, when things orchestrate or synchronize together, and it's word, 
some some hlium, it's like it kind of is similar to when nodes are clinging together or resonating okay. in the same so so that that is the first part and then it says it's time we become aware of the wonder of consciousness itself the wonder of becoming aware of your own existence wow no wonder i had all these beautiful energetic sensations how beautiful thank you thank you and i want to close today with that allowing the wonder of the unexpected harmonies and the unexpected harmonic resonance that exists and that we can all tap in when we have the courage to look beyond the dissonance and beyond the illusion. That's perfect. That's like, uh, that's it. That's it. That's it for today. You know, that's fine. Okay. Lessons and some sit up. Yeah. Dear Olafur, much love yeah. your way. It is as always. It's not a pleasure. It's an honor. It's a wondrous time together. It's really the magic. It's joyful. And for me, it's just, it's a, it's a sheer joy, you know, this conversation and yes. this experience of the flow at these times. So bringing that yeah. energy out and, and exploring the language that goes with it. So again, thank you very much. And we'll see each other very soon. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.